Welcome back to your third tutorial on Objective C, and today we're going to be going through again some more of the basics, going line by line, and actually making ourselves familiar with what each of the, the uh, different code and the command line prompts are, the import, the functions, all that stuff. So then we can move on to some more advanced features within Xcode 4. So in the last tutorial, we did kind of a little bit of a tour. So if you haven't been there, go back, take a look at it. You'll see how we got to this point. And then we also ran the command line prompt. So down here you can see the hello world, which is the NS log that we had prompted on earlier, appeared. So now what we're going to do is run line by line down the code here and kind of explain what each part is. And that will help you kind of grasp where we're going with this. Anyways, very top. Let's start off on the very top up there, the green text which kind of goes through created by, copyrights, all rights reserved, all that stuff. It's green because it's it's a comment. And we know it's a comment because of the double forward slashes, the two forward slashes there. Um, which basically means it's not going to interfere with any of the programming. So any of the stuff that you write within the commented section is not going to actually be taken into account for the programming if that makes sense. So we could actually write in here anything we want and it's not going to affect the program's behavior. Um, just a little bit of side note because I like to go on those bunny trails. If you were to use a forward slash with an asterisk, this is called block commenting. And to sum it up or to end the block commenting, you just do the reverse. You do an asterisk and then a forward slash. So then anything we write within this block is commented out. So that's just another way that you can add comments in a larger area, per se. Um, so that's enough for that bunny trail. Anyways, let's move on to the next line. If you got any questions, feel free to comment. We'll hopefully help you out there. The next line is a statement. And the statement is an import statement of the foundation slash foundation.h which basically this part right here, the foundation slash foundation.h is a header framework, which if you can imagine there was a, let's just say there was a bunch of code at the top here. And we didn't want to write it every time. We just wanted to input like, let's say foundation slash foundation x h and that took care of it. We didn't have to write a million lines before we got down to our main function here but we just want to put this in there and say hey you fill in the rest with the thousand lines that we don't want to write every time so if you can imagine like a new program has to have certain lines up at the top um, and we didn't want to write those exact same lines every time we want to write a command line or, or uh, an application this is a simple way to import those into our application every time and we don't have to write those so it gets rid of kind of the monotonous things that uh, people have to write every time. Now just to reference, this foundation.h can be found over in the frameworks, framework, foundation.frameworks, headers, and as you can see the very top one is the foundation.h, which goes through and it imports a ton of different things out there. And uh, we'll go into that at a later date, but just want to give you a reference of where that's found. So go back to the main.m the next part here is an entered integer main which is a, the main function of our command here our app here followed by some arguments which we'll get into a later date that are associated with the main function so keep in mind that um, we have an integer because down here we have a return zero which again we'll get into a little bit later but basically if it returns zero we know that the application we know that it went through the program went through good and we don't have to worry about it from there on so there's our main function and then the next line is going to be an ns auto release pool and the ns auto release pool is a memory management in the framework for xcode and so basically the program saying, hey, I need some memory because I'm going to do this with the program. And so I need you to give me some memory. And so in this case, we have the NS auto release pool allocated to our program 
to automatically give us memory when we need it. And so then followed by that, again you can see some green text with our double forward slashes or forward slashes and that is going to be again a comment line. We could delete this out, we could write more things beyond it and uh, move on from there. So old news right there. The next thing, the NS log, this is going to be similar to like a print function in the programming sing language. So NS log is basically a display function call so you can see what you're doing. So in this case as we ran the application the NS log displayed hello world. And so that's what we're going to do at the the end of this tutorial just to prove the concept. But uh, let's wrap up and finish out the last lines here. Pool drain this is going to be associated to our pool up here. And the pool drain is basically saying, okay, I don't need any more of this memory that we've reserved, that we've allocated for our function calls. So I'm gonna give it back to you. I'm gonna give the I'm gonna give the memory back to the, the computer or the device. And so that is what uh, that is associated with. We kind of already went over the return zero, but the return zero again is gonna be associated with our main function up at the top. And again, if it returns anything other than zero, we know we have an error or a problem within the program. So hopefully that wasn't too fast. I mean, again, some of the basics, we're going to get into some of the more in-depth. What do these arguments mean up here? What is the integer, you know, in integer of the main function, etc. But uh, again, for a later date. So last, what I want you to do. Today, I went out. I was looking for some squirrels and uh you know didn't see any we we're out in this field just just walking around looking for some squirrels not going to say that i was hunting for them but just looking because i know there's some people that disagree with that I, i'm totally cool with that but uh what we're just going to do is we're going to write something else in this ns log you know uh so we're just going to write squirrels can't spell today squirrels don't like me Go ahead and modify that in your NS log. And all I want you guys to do is run the command line prompt. So click again the run on the top left or command R. And as you can see, our program succeeded. We've got our timestamp, the name of the program here, and instead of hello world, we now have squirrels don't like me. I don't know what it is. I don't know if I smell, whatever else it is. But uh, anyways, so you can see by simply changing certain things within the command line prompt, we can get different results. And so as we move forward, we're going to start tweaking little things. We're going to add variables, um, add strings, and maybe you don't know what those are, but we'll get into it. We'll make it easy. And uh, we'll keep going forward with uh, the little things. So with uh, wrapping up the end of the lesson here, um, like I said, you got any questions, let us know. Again, some of the basics, we'll get into a little bit more. Don't forget to subscribe, let us know what you're looking for, and uh, we'll continue to help you guys out. All right, peace out.